Hello everyone, my name is Alexandria. I work as a naturalist for the Mercer County Park Commission at the Topa Hiking Nature Center. Is there something that you absolutely love learning about and are eager to share with your family? Maybe you love birds or seashells, or maybe you know a lot about dinosaurs. Well, today I will be reading a story about a young girl who just loves everything about bugs. In The Bug Girl, a true story, written by eight-year-old Sophia Spencer, with help from Margaret McNamara, and illustrated by Kara Squett, you will hear how bugs became a big passion for a young girl. The first time I made friends with a bug, I was two and a half years old. My mom took me to a butterfly conservatory, which is like a zoo for butterflies. As soon as we got there, a butterfly perched on my shoulder. It flitted onto my hand and my foot, my elbow and my head, even my nose. It stayed with me the whole time we were there. When it was time to go home, a guard stopped us at the door. I'm sorry, miss, the butterfly has to stay here, he told me. Say goodbye to the butterfly, said my mom but it did not move. Carefully, gently, the guard took the butterfly from my shoulder and after a moment, away it flew. Bye bye butterfly, I said. From that day on, I was bug crazy. Other kids liked storybooks. I liked bug books. Other kids watched cat videos. I watched bug videos over and over and over. I noticed bugs everywhere I went. By the time I turned five, I knew a lot about bugs. There are billions of bugs on our planet. Bugs have been on Earth way longer than humans have. They live on every continent, even Antarctica. One way or another, most plants and animals rely on bugs to survive. The scientific name for bugs is arthropods, but I call them bugs for short. In kindergarten, nobody minded that I loved bugs. When the other kids in my class started a karaoke club, I started a bug hunter club. Every weekend, my friends and I took our bug buckets and nets and magnifying glasses out to the stream near my house. We collected fireflies and watched them glow. We identified beetles by their two sets of hidden wings and counted the spots on ladybugs. We watched the dragonflies hover like helicopters. We even collected stink bugs, which really can stink. I took the bugs home to study them. Mostly, I had to keep them out on the porch so they wouldn't escape and crawl around the house. It's just mom and me at home, so we share chores. Mom has a lot of rules. Make your bed, pick up your clothes, Keep your room neat. No ants in the house, unless they're in an ant farm. I have just one rule. All bugs must live. If there's a mosquito buzzing, I snatch it up in a napkin and let it go. We don't have a fly swatter. We have a fly net. One night, my mom saw a water bug, a giant flying roach, in the middle of the living room. She knew the bug rule was important to me, so she didn't kill it. She put a net over it and waited for me to find it in the morning. But when I lifted up the net, it was gone. When I got to first grade, everything changed. Nobody wanted to hear about bugs. 
Nobody thought bug facts were cool. At first, I didn't mind. Then I brought a grasshopper to school. I thought the kids would be so amazed by the grasshopper that they'd want to know all about it, but they didn't. A bunch of kids crowded around me and made fun of me. Sophia's being weird again, one of them said. Ew, gross, said another. Get rid of it. Then they knocked that beautiful grasshopper off my shoulder and stomped on it till it was dead. That night I went home and cried and cried. Those kids are wrong, my mom said. It's okay to love bugs, Sophia. I know, I said. It just doesn't feel like it. I had to go back to school, but I didn't bring a bug with me ever again. That didn't stop kids from making fun of me. About halfway through first grade, I took a break from bugs. My mom did not like seeing me so unhappy. Not one bit. She knew I needed to find other people who loved bugs as much as I did. She wrote an email to a group of entomologists asking for one of them to be my bug pal. She wanted me to hear from an expert that it was not weird or strange to love bugs and insects. Maybe somebody will write back, said my mom. Maybe, I said, or at least call. We thought those scientists would be too busy to respond. But three days later, my mom got an email. She opened it. It's from a bug scientist named Morgan Jackson, she said. He wants to put my letter online so that other entomologists can read about you, okay? Okay. I said. Morgan Jackson posted my mom's letter and he asked other bug scientists all around the world to let me know if they had any advice for a girl who loves bugs. Two days after that, messages and posts and videos poured in. I couldn't believe how many people around the world loved bugs as much as I did, and how many of them were grown up women. Some were scientists who wrote about the work they do in their labs. Others shared videos of themselves with bugs on their arms and sent pictures of themselves hunting bugs in the wild. I looked at those messages day after day all these people love bugs, I said to my mom. They do, she said, and they're not weird. Nope, said mom. They're curious, just like you. Newspaper reporters read my story online and they started calling my mom to find out more. The reporters asked to interview me and I talked to them on the phone. My mom and I even appeared on television, which was a bit scary. It's hard to be on television when you are just an ordinary person, but I did it. I wanted to get the word out that it's okay to love bugs. Then Morgan Jackson decided to write a scientific article about how entomologists can get young people excited about science. Morgan asked if I would like to help write the article. I said yes. School got a lot easier after that because I didn't feel so alone. And nowadays, I like even more things. Gymnastics, time travel books, swimming, and technology.
but not too long ago when somebody asked me to describe myself in three words, I said, the bug girl. That's because I'm happiest when it's just me, a few green leaves, some drops of water, and a bug to keep me company. Thank you for joining us today for our children's nature story, The Bug Girl, A True Story. See you next time. For our family share activity, go on an insect hunt. First, download and print the TNC Common Insects Field Guide pages found in the description. Then go outside and search for insects. Look in trees, on shrubs, near the ground, and under rocks or logs. If you find one that is on the field guide, circle it with a crayon. If you find an insect that is not on the list, draw a picture of it on page two of the field guide. Then ask an adult to help you identify it. How many insects can you find? Have fun!